I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. Thanks for choosing to watch this clip from our Small Town Big Deal YouTube channel. For full episodes, go to our website, smalltownbigdeal.com. Now, enjoy the video. In this quaint rural village near Nashville, we met up with one of their most famous residents, Mike Wolf of the History Channel show American Pickers. When it came time to house his treasured motorcycle collection, he built a Morton building on his property in these Tennessee hills. Since Morton Buildings is one of our longtime show sponsors, they arranged for Rodney and I to meet Mike, see his amazing collection, and tour inside. what he and Morton had dreamed up yeah. together. There's no tractors in here. <laughs> no tractors, sorry, yeah. but... So why Morton? When I first started doing this about 27 years ago, it just seemed like every other building I was in was a Morton building. <laughs> All the things that are in here are very special to me in one way or another because I come across so much stuff. So I wanted to build something that could house those things. Did you design? Yeah, I mean, I had a say in every aspect of it. I wanted high ceilings because I knew I was going to hang things from the ceiling. I kind of was like, I want a building, and they're like, okay, and, and uh, the, the <laughs> guy's like, me. I tell, build. Tell, us, tell us what you want to do. And I said, well, I want to put some motorcycles in there, he's okay. I wanted the exterior to be very simple, it utilitarian look. Really, yeah, it's kind of manly yeah. and sort of like dark, yeah, used it's motorcycle dark. It's look. Dark. I like that. Why do you like bikes so much? The first thing I ever found and sold was a bicycle, and I was about five years old, and I used to wander around the neighborhood, and this bicycle was behind this garage, and it had tons of weeds all over it, and I just asked the guy, I said, can I have this bicycle, you know? And he goes, yeah, and I pulled it home, and all I did was I wiped it off, I remember, and then I think my neighbor helped me put some air in the tires, and then this older kid came down the street, and he goes, what do you want for that bicycle? And I was like, Five dollars, and he goes, he bought, he paid me for it. <laughs> and the hook was set. Yeah. People collect what reminds them of their childhood. You know, I grew up on a farm, and I, I, I wanted that closeness to tractors brings me back to my childhood. Yeah, but I, you know, I think it's, it's we like old stuff. That's why her and I work so good together. I, yeah, I heard that line before. It's still not funny. I can't imagine walking through life without this passion. Oh, I know. It's like Mike and Rodney were separated at birth. One went the motorcycle route, the other the tractor route, but the same passion. Why'd they separate us? I mean, I could've hung with him my whole life. What is your favorite thing that you've collected through the years? What? It's really, I mean, antique archaeology really started from antique motorcycles and antique bicycles. I was always a bicycle guy, and I can remember finding bicycles for guys in California, and this is way before the internet, so you'd take a picture, like a Polaroid, <laughs> and then you'd put it in the mail, and then seven days later the guy would call you, and then you weren't home, so you had to call him back, and it would cost you $20 to talk to him. Yeah. Remember the long distance bills and oh, all yeah. that? So, and then he, and then you were always praying that he wasn't gonna go, well, can you send me more pictures? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, that's really how my business started was just dealing with antique bicycles and, and selling a lot of that stuff to, on the West Coast because what I was doing was I was running ads and putting up little flyers on telephone poles and laundromats and gas stations in small towns saying I want to buy old bicycles and no one would ever call me. <clears throat> Oh and I'm like, wow, how am I going to find these things, you know? So I decided one day I was driving by a farm and I had a bunch of stuff junked up and I had one of my flyers and I said, I'm just going to drive up there and ask that guy if he's got an old bicycle. So I drove up there and, and I said, do you have any old bicycles? And I handed him a flyer. He's like, yeah, I think I got something like that. And I went in a barn and bought an old bicycle from him. And uh, so... And that was your first pick? Yeah, and that was like, yeah, kind of, yeah. Yeah, the first time I like went over to somebody's house I didn't know. I was just yeah. looking for bicycles. Worked <laughs> out. And then I ran into these antique dealers and... Uh, and, and they're like, oh, these bicycles are neat. Where are you getting them at? And I said, well, I'd knock on doors and I'd buy them up from farmers and stuff. And, and they said, well, don't you see other things in their barns? And I go, yeah, I see that stuff. I go, I don't really have any interest in it. And they're like, well, we do. Buy that stuff and sell it to us. And I said, oh, okay. Ding. So I started buying some like old Crocs and some dressers and yeah. mirrors and signs and stuff. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just kind of buying stuff that I liked. And then, but I would pay attention to what they had you know, like what he had and he had. I was like, okay, I kind of like that stuff. So then I started selling stuff to them. And then, uh, and then I got a space in an antique mall. I said, I can do this myself. And, and I had a couple shelves, you know, and I was selling a few things there. It was more about, being in an antique mall to me was more about the social aspect of it. Because when you go, you know, you talk to the other dealers, yeah. you know, and they're like, hey, what have you been finding, you know? And these guys were all way older than me. I was like 25 at the time or something, you know? And, they were in their 60s, and so we, I always got a kick talking to them and 
So I learned a lot from them. And so I started buying more and more. And then finally, I was selling this one guy a lot of stuff all of a sudden. He always bought a lot from me, but he was buying more and more and more. And I go, what are you doing with all this stuff? I go, you're buying a lot. And he goes, oh, uh, I'm selling it on uh, the internet. I go, the internet? I go, What's wow. that? Yeah, basically, yeah. I didn't even have a computer. And, and I always had, at this time, I had a bicycle shop. Yeah. And the guy was like, hey, uh, I'll give you a computer for a bicycle. And I go, I don't want a computer. I don't even know how to turn what it on. What am I going to do with a computer? So finally, I, he came in and kept for, he's forcing this computer on me. I go, I tell you what, give me the computer, and I want to go on eBay. He goes, have you ever heard of that? He goes, no, but let's look it up. So I got on there, eBay, and I was like, wow, look at this. There's all these auctions and stuff on here. And so I started putting stuff on there. And I was like, whoa. I mean, it just took off like crazy. And I wasn't, see, when, when, when you're a picker, you have to sell at a wholesale price to a dealer, you know, in order for them to make a margin on it. Mm -hmm. So when, when eBay came out, I was making full boat margin. Oh, sure, you're selling directly to me, the customer. I'm selling directly to you, and it was fun and everything. And, and I was selling just things overseas. Anyway, so I went from a bicycle shop retail to a cell phone, a cargo van, and a website. Wow. And I just hit the road. Yeah. And uh, started going out to the East Coast a lot. And so my overhead dropped to nothing, but my margins went sky high, and everything I was selling was on the internet. Every once in a while, I would still buy for a client, but, um, but it was really more about the internet for me. And I yeah. learned what I could sell at a flea market, what I could yeah. sell in a retail setting, what I could sell it, on the internet, and then what I was buying for clients. And I was always one of those guys, even early on when I first started collecting bicycles, I would sell 10 bicycles to buy one. Yeah. Mm. I was always one of those guys. Now, Frank, he is a super freak in regards to just collect, collect, collect. When I first met Frank after high school, you know, we, I went, moved to Chicago and Saint, into Seattle and to LA and Colorado. I was just kind of bouncing around. I came home one time and I saw him. I'm like, what are you doing, man? He's like, I've been. You know, some collecting some stuff. I go, I collect stuff too. He goes, yeah, I, he goes, I go to flea market sometimes. I go, I go to flea market sometimes too. That's cool. We should go picking sometime together. And I go, what are you into? And uh, <laughs> he was collecting razor blades, <laughs> like razor blades. And like the displays, like there'd be a, a, a cardboard card yeah. with all the razor blades on it. So he would collect the cards with all the razor blades on them and they had to have the razor blades all on there. And he was just a freak about it. And then he was collecting tire patch kits. There's a number of different ones, you know. So I was thinking to myself, okay, yeah. I've known this guy since eighth grade. And it's like, why, is, why are you collecting razor blades? And why are you collecting tire patch kits? But whatever, they just floated his boat. But yeah, literally we'll your boat. thousands of them. Like he's, his house looks like the places we pick. You have to like walk through it like this, <laughs> stack no. up. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and he's got the cat in there, and it's oh, like, no. and it's like, you know, I told him, I said, me and Danielle are gonna knock on your door sometime, man, dude. We're gonna have an intervention. <laughs> we have an intervention. And so now we think, I think he's, I think he's packed away a lot of the razor blades, and now he's he's into motorcycle toys. But now what he's doing is he'll buy a hundred of the same motorcycle toy, the same exact toy, the same color, everything, and he'll have it all on display. That one toy. Wow. And I'm like. What are you doing? You know, so he it's likes just, repetition. Yeah, it's it, he likes repetition, and he's just he's a creature of habit. Thanks for watching this clip from Small Town Big Deal. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and be sure to click the bell so you'll be notified when we upload new videos. Also, click the like button to see full episodes. Go to www.smalltownbigdeal.com.